Time now for the after dinner mint we call the friend zone, where we bring our friends from within the building here at Fox on to the set. And tonight, one of our favorites, Ed Henry. We have a question for him. Okay, the oh. president elect, Donald Trump, he's got a new hotel here in Washington. It could be a problem once he's in office. House Democrats say the General Services Administration told them Mr. Trump must fully divest from that property or will be in violation of the lease. Is that true? That part is true. There's obviously a bigger question about what he should do in terms of conflict of interest. The reason why this part narrowly is true is that remember that Donald Trump got the lease from the government. This right. is the old post office yes. in Washington, very historic building. It's been run down, become like a food court basically. Yeah. And it was ridiculous. And he's turned it into a beautiful hotel. You see those those pictures. But the lease with the General Services Administration says that no government official can oversee this property, right. can own this hotel, because this was before he was a presidential candidate, number one, and number two, they figured they wanted to make sure that President Obama or now President Trump didn't pick some son-in-law or uncle or something to own the hotel through a government contract. You know, make sure there's no nepotism. That's a reasonable thing to do. Now you have this odd position where someone who's a businessman for the first time has become president, uh, and someone who has a hotel just blocks from the White House, and it's, it's obviously odd because the commander-in-chief you know, owns a hotel, yeah. the lease is held by the government that he oversees. If they want to renegotiate any of the terms, he's the boss. He helps control their, you know, the GSA's budget. So I think, look, in all uh, likelihood, what's going to happen is that Donald Trump as president will have to get off the lease technically yes. and, and, and sell that property to one or both of, uh, you know, Donald Jr. and Eric. My, my broader point is, this is going to be part of whatever he does with his news conference exactly. that was supposed to happen this week. Does he divest completely? Does he get his kids more involved? These are going to be big questions moving forward. Interesting. So I, I walked by your office the other night, <laughs> and it was really, really late. And you're sitting in there, hunting and pecking. You do type with two fingers, I noticed. <laughs> and I said, Ed, what are you doing? You're banging on a script. You said, no, I'm finishing up a book. Mm, yeah. I didn't even know you were writing it. What is it? Book on Jackie Robinson. It's coming out on April 4th, time to the beginning of the baseball season, and to the 70th anniversary of Jackie's first game, April 15th. Um, you see his picture there. He's a hero of mine. My son happens to have the same birthday, April 15th, Patrick. Um, and so it's a nice coincidence because I was at a dinner party in Washington in 2008. I'll spare you all the details, but it was one of the worst parties. It was a Belgium ambassador. <laughs> oh, I think I may have been there. Yeah. You might have been there, right? <laughs> and there's 42 Faith because it's about Jackie Robinson's faith in God because I was at this dinner party. You know these parties that go on and on? The Belgium ambassador threw it, and he served pigeon. Okay? Oh. It's a delicacy in Belgium. Uh, you have to read the book to get what else happened there. Okay? Give me the French but I'm fries, sitting man. Next to a, Spare me the pigeon. sitting next to a woman who said, I tried to leave early. I said I wanted to go watch a baseball game. She said, oh, you're a baseball fan? My late father-in-law had a major role in baseball history. I sat back down. She said the story's never been told. Long story short is that her late father-in-law was a minister in Brooklyn who in 1945 had Branch Rickey knock on the door and basically say he wasn't sure if he could go through with signing Jackie Robinson to the first contract. Uh, he obviously went through with it. But why did he go see a minister was my question. And what did the minister say? And I was able to track all of this down. It's in the book. And then it led me to look did at... Did she help you with the book, this woman you met? She did, Donna Shore. And I give her great credit in the book. And um, the minister told his wife before he died that this secret meeting had happened in a church in Brooklyn. Uh, and the minister's wife told it in the 1960s at, at the church in Brooklyn, put it in the bulletin because she wanted Jackie Robinson to know that Branch Rickey sought a higher power, that he reached behind, you know, beyond himself to get the first African-American to play. I thought it was really profound. And I wanted to know, since she revealed this in a church bulletin in the 1960s, did Jackie Robinson, who sadly died so early in 1972, um, did he know about this before he died? So I go on a journey, and I start with Carl Erskine, one of the only surviving members of Brooklyn Dodgers, nine, almost 90 years old, at an IHOP in Indiana. And I end with Rachel Robinson in her office in New York, the widow of Jackie Robinson. She's still alive, almost 95 years old. And she answers the question about whether Jackie knew. That is great. You've totally, you've did I totally so? I just sort of did that no, on the fly. I'm, I'm serious, actually. That sounds like a great book. And it's it, gonna, took, it sounds like it took a lot of legwork, which I admire. It did. It's going to be fun. Good I, for I you. I love baseball. I'm passionate about it. And so it's 42 Faith, the rest of the Jackie Robinson story. Because everyone told me, I've, I already saw the movie. I, there's nothing new. There's new stuff. In Done. Pre-order tonight. Good. Ed, Thanks. thank you. Appreciate great it. Great to see you, man. <laughs>